Hi there. In this video, I would like to go over how to install and uh, set up the Blocky World Editor, which was uh, created as videos on how it was all built, uh, pretty much every single line uh, over four videos that you can watch as well. But if you just want to install and use it and get set up, uh, that's what this video is for. So to start, um, we will copy the link to the GitHub repository, and then we can go to our package manager and add to get URL here. Paste that in. Okay, once that compiles and reloads in our editor, we can now start to see a few extra things here. First thing we'll probably want is a palette. Now a palette is just any collection of objects that we want to paint into our scene. Um, so I'll call this terrain. And we need a list of blocks. Now I've got a just a collection of ones here and also a few uh, landscape items. So for all of these, we're just going to add the blocky object to all of them. And comes up to our next point, we see a layer. Now a layer is part of the key or location of where the object will be placed. So if you have two different layers, they can occupy the same world space. But if you have two objects on the same layer in the same world space, then one of them will be deleted uh, when you try and set it down there. So let's create a new layer. And for now, I'm just going to also call this terrain um, and select that here. Now, a few of these would be fine to have a random rotation. Um, so I'm going to select this so that when, when we're our editor and we're placing objects, if we do have random rotation on, then those ones will be allowed. Stairs and ones with texture differences, we don't want to, uh, we want them to be specifically set. So with that, we now have our terrain, our palette and our layer, and we've got some objects. So we can now go to our blocky editor here and we will see our palettes um, here. Oh, and we have an error. Let's, uh, nope, I've got an error. Okay, looks like we're gonna have to do some debugging here. Ah, yes. So now that we have our palette, we actually have to add items to our palette. Um, that's something I'm going to fix so that that error will actually show. Um, but we can, for now, lock that and add all of our terrains to our palette. Okay. So now, if I uh, do a bit of refresh there, there we go. We can now see all of our items that we just set. Um, so there are a number of hotkeys when you're using the um, out here. We've got grid height with W and S. Um, let's actually kind of see this. If I go to paint here, we can see that my grid height is set to zero. And if I click, we will have those items being placed. Now, if I want to increase the height, I can either come over here or I can use W and S. So now I am one above or go higher there. To, un to delete items, you can hold the control key and you'll see it turns red there and that will allow us to delete. Now I'm just single clicking, but you can also drag and that will also work. Same with the control or you can hold shift and that will allow you to do a square drag and that'll just place them all and again control to delete so very quick on uh on placing 
items and deleting them. There is no undo. Um, that was a choice, although it could be added, um, depending on, I haven't really checked the improvements, but they have been improved, the undo system, quite a bit. Um, you can also do brush sizes and rotations. So rotation, kind of hard to see with this one, but uh, there you go. So we can go clockwise or counterclockwise and just like that. Or you can allow for a random rotation if it's been set, um, which these ones have not. That's my cat in the background. Um, but random rotations, you can see here that they are being set randomly, which is nice for um, other objects. But we'll show that in a second. Uh, the last one is brush size, which you can use with plus or minus or one, two, three, four uh, keys as well. And those work with the painting uh, dragon as well. So you can do all of that. Okay, so that's the basic functionality. Um, the parent setter, we can, the default one that it comes with, but this can be, uh, you can create your own. Uh, which in the part four of the videos, I actually go over how to create uh, its own a separate one about world streaming and partitioning. So um, we'll call this parent group and add that to here. And now when we paint, it'll all be placed under the parent group there instead of on our main. So that can be useful, um, but there's much other uses to create your own. Um, you'd probably want to for most of your games. Um, the select tool um, is pretty self-explanatory, I think, but you can select and it will add or hold control to remove the selection. Um, so that is about... There we go. Okay, so base functionality kind of down. Um, the next thing I'd like to go over is the randomizer. So the randomizer here, we'll call this flowers. If we take a look at our landscape, we have some flowers here. And placing all of those by hand, probably not the best to do. So. I'm going to make a new landscape uh, palette and make sure that we add our blocky object here. That can stay on the terrain layer. That's fine. Now, so these ones here, what this is simply going to do is select a random from a list. So these three random flowers. And then our palette landscape. We are going to add the random. So now when we choose our landscape, we'll see this little random flowers here. And it will just choose one and randomize. Oh, let's turn on our allow random rotation. And we can see it just does that. So that can be really nice for things like foliage, um, bits of garbage and stuff or whatever kind of our insignificant parts, but add a bit of culture or texture, I mean, to the, um, to the world. Um, so let's add to our palette. It would be nice to be able to drag items directly onto this palette, which is something um, we might consider doing as well but for now. There we go. Cool. All right. So lastly, the one of the primary features I'd like to go over is the rule set. 
Now the little set was taken directly from the official Unity tile sets. Um, and good for things like paths or fences, things like that. Um, if we go to our inspector and we have a default block. So what this is going to do is check on the neighbors and depending on what they are, it will then set, um, choose one from this list. So let's say this uh, edge path, oh, right? You cannot drag and drop. You have to choose from this list. Uh, it's something I go over in the tutorial videos, but I always forget. Um, path edge, okay. So we're saying, I always get these kind of mixed up, but which one's which, but anyway, uh, transform rotate, we'll simply rotate this uh, four times and check all of the all of those possibilities um, or you can mirror X mirror Y mirror X Y so let's go inner so an in inner corner if we take a look at this would be something like that I always get these mixed up we'll try it um, path outer, and this one is more like that. Okay, so let's add the rule set to our terrain. Okay, so we now have a rule set here, and when we paint, we get a big mess. Okay, so obviously my rules are not quite right, but that's okay. We can uh, we can fix that. Like I said, I normally get this wrong. Um, that looks to be probably wrong here. Nope, complete opposite. Okay, getting closer. There we go. And this one again. There we go. So now we can see that it all place. Now the correct block um, depending on its neighbors. And so that'll give us much faster being able to create our world um, and place our objects. Just going to mess about here. Um, that's about it. Um, there's a lot of improvements I still wanted to do and a lot of things that can still be done, but um, for a base start, I would um, like you to yeah, want to try it out, please do so. And then let me know how it goes. If there's any features or um, things you want to do, um, then we can always take a look, but I would love some pull requests or anything else. That would be, uh, that would be great. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you very much. And, uh, have a great day.